Now in the previous video, we have applied the method of calculating volumes by cross-section in cases where the cross-section was a disk. In this video, we are going to look at a slightly more general case. Instead of taking the area under the graph of a function, essentially uh, the area that is bounded below by the x-axis or more generally uh, uh, an horizontal line, and above by the graph of a function and rotating that about this horizontal line at the bottom. Uh, we're going to look at the case where we take a plane region that doesn't touch the um, axis of revolution and look at what, happen, what happens in this case. So if now I rotate this region about the x-axis, it doesn't need to be the x-axis but what is important here is that the region doesn't uh, touch the axis of revolution. Then what I obtain is something that looks like that and more specifically if we try to track what happens uh, for the cross section if you look at the red line segment above X on the picture at the top and you imagine that you rotate it about the x-axis and you look, track what it forms in your solid revolution. Then you see that what you obtain is that the uh, uh, the red dot on the on the top curve describes a circle, and so does the red dot on the bottom curve. It describes a smaller circle, and the segment in between describes a solid washer, and so we have a outer disk but we have to take out of it an inner disk that is with the same center because both these disks are centered on the x-axis. So to calculate the volume of the solid of revolution what you need what we need is the area of the cross section. In this case the cross section is a washer. More specifically if we take this washer and bring it back in the plane of the board. In this case everything is tilted so that we can draw everything on the same picture. If we take this washer, put it back in the plane of the board, it looks like that. And the inner radius is little r of x corresponds to the value of the lower function and the outer radius is capital R of x corresponding to the value of the function on top. So now, of course, the area of the red part, which is a washer, is the area of the outer disk, so pi capital R square, minus the area of the small disk inside, which is pi little r square. So for the area of the cross section, we obtain pi multiplied by the outer radius squared minus the inner radius squared. Let's see how to apply that. Let's say for instance we want to find the volume of the solid of revolution obtained by revolving the plane region bounded by y equal x squared plus 1 and y equals 3 minus x about the line y equals 0, in other words the x-axis. As usual with this kind of things, we first have to sketch the plane region involved. Here we have the curve y equals x squared plus 1, this parabola, and the line y equals 3 minus x. And um, the region bounded by these two curves is this one. And to really consider this region, we need to know about these points of intersection. On the picture, it looks like they have x coordinates negative 2 and 1, but we can confirm that um, by calculation simply by saying that a point of intersection is a point where for a given x we get the same y along the two curves, in other words x squared plus 1 is equal to 3 minus x. Putting everything on the left hand side that gives me x squared plus x minus 2 equals 0 and that factors as x minus 1 x plus 2. In other words the solutions are as expected negative 2 and 1 for x. So when we'll set up the integral, we'll have our bounds, negative 2 and 1. Now we rotate this region about the x-axis. 
you see that the region this time does not touch the um, axis of rotation. So when I look at the part of the region that sits above a certain x, because now we are looking at the cross section by x equal constant, so the cross section by a plane that is perpendicular to the plane of the board and vertical. And we rotate this line segment about the x-axis. Now because everything happens in a plane that is perpendicular to the plane of the board, we cannot draw it uh, really in that plane and we have to tilt things by a certain angle. And to see that we are going to redraw this picture in a tilted way. So you have this interval from negative 2 to 1 for x which is what is interesting to us and uh, we're going to rotate this plane region about the x-axis and you see that what we rotate is for each x a line segment that um, joins these two curves and so we have the distance from the x-axis to the point that is going to form the uh, bounding circle for the inside uh, disk the one that will be hollow is this little r of x that's going to be x squared plus 1 the point that is that when rotated is going to form the outer circle is at a distance from the x-axis that is uh, negative x plus 3 so when we do this rotation we obtain some things that looks like that and the cross section is again a washer where the outer radius is this capital R which is negative x plus 3 and the inner radius x squared plus 1. What that means is that the area of the cross section is pi multiplied by the difference of the squares between the outer radius and inner radius. So I have 3 minus x squared minus x squared plus 1 squared. Writing out what that means, the square of 3 minus x is x squared minus 6x plus 9. The square of x squared plus 1 is x to the fourth plus 2x squared plus 1. Simplifying what we have in the parentheses, we obtain pi multiplied by negative x to the fourth minus x squared minus 6x plus 8. So now the volume is obtained by integrating this cross section function over the interval negative 2, 1 because we've seen that uh, the corresponding range of x values for this region is from negative 2 to 1. So now this is a polynomial function so it's easy to integrate. Uh, an antiderivative of x to the fourth is x to the fifth over 5, of x squared is x cubed over 3, of 6x is 3x squared and of 8 is 8x. We evaluate this function between negative 2 and 1 and we get this big ugly thing which after simplification is 117 pi divided by 5. Let's look at another example. This time we want to find the volume of the solid of revolution that we obtain by revolving the plane region bounded by y equal 2 root of x, y equal 2 and x equal 0 about the line y equal 0. So again about the x-axis. So as usual the first thing we need to do is sketch the plane region. So we draw y equal 2 root x and y equal 2 and x equal 0 is the y-axis. So the region that is bounded by the y-axis y equal 2 and y equal 2 root x is this region and we're going to revolve it about the x-axis we need to find what this point is and uh, of course it has second coordinate y equal 2 but for the x coordinate corresponds to the intersection of the curve y equal 2 root x with y equal 2 and of course 2 root x is equal to 2 when x is 1 in other words this point has first coordinate 1 now we look at the cross section by planes x equal constant so for a given x we cut the region, we obtain a light line segment between the two curves and we're going to rotate this line segment about the x-axis. When we do that, we obtain 
a washer that looks like this and you see that the radius both discs are centered on the x-axis in the radius of the uh, white disc, right, the empty disc is simply two root x because this is a distance from the x-axis to the point on the first curve and the radius of the outer disc is two because the distance from the x-axis to the curve y equal two is of course two so that means that the cross section is a washer with inner radius two root x and outer radius two and therefore its area is pi multiplied by the square of the outer radius minus the square of the inner radius so we get 4 minus 4x inside the parentheses factoring out the 4 I get 4 pi multiplied by 1 minus x now the volume of the resulting solid of revolution is the integral of this function from 0 to 1 because we have seen that the range of x values corresponding to this region is from 0 to 1. So we obtain 4 pi integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus x. 1 minus x is easy to integrate by the fundamental theorem of calculus. The non-tidervative is simply x minus x squared over 2. We evaluate that between 0 and 1. The value at 1 is 1 minus 1 half, in other words 1 half. The value at 0 is 0. So we get 4 pi times 1 half, in other words 2 pi.